Game two, turn three. Make sure your seat belts are tightened for this one. Matthew laid a super shot with red. Black responded with a reverse deep duffer tice that Zach shot at hard instead of dribbling at the way they usually do. Had he missed that, yellow would have been a seven yarder for blue from corner three. But I don't think he worries too much about what happens if he misses. While he's setting up, this is of course the Solomon Trophy AC Croquet Test Match between the U.S. and Great Britain. Being held November 9 to 12, 2023 at the newly renovated Sarasota County Croquet Club in Venice, Florida. The tournament director is USCA President David Bidencope. The tournament managers are John and Ellen Goldener. And the tournament referee is Stuart Lawrence with able assistance from Jeff Sue. And I have to give a shout out to Mike Albert as the all around get it done guy because without him I couldn't have done this video production at all. Thanks as always to our sponsors, Chris Barley, the U.S. Croquet Association, of course, where you can find everything you need to know about this game and you can get all the equipment you need from Don Oakley at the Croquet Store by Oakley Woods. In fact, Zach Watson is playing a custom mallet that Don Oakley put together for him, working with beginners and potential world champions. Think about where he goes with yellow if he doesn't get this hoop shot. <clears throat> How about on the west boundary, midway to guard the shot by blue in fourth turn from the end of B block at black or from A block at red. Now then blue would just shoot at red into corner two, so yellow probably goes to the east boundary. Let me know what you think in the comments. This break comes together. Zach makes nine. They miss the lift shot. Matthew gets a crack at a fifth turn triple peel.
it's generally recommended that you prioritize three ball breaks over four ball breaks because in AC peeling turns, it's basically a three ball break with peeling maneuvers on the pivot ball. And sometimes you only have three balls to work with. And every now and then, throw in a two ball break and see how many hoops you can get. This hoop and row case situation is way different in American rules. He wants to hit it hard to make sure he makes the hoop. And you see it's a row case. In American rules, it's not. And then he has that shot to keep going. He would have preferred to stop red right about there. He'll cope though. In an AC, you can even knock it out of bounds and keep going.
What leave? Three ducks. Diagonal spread without the peg ball. A rush on opponent, so you make hoop one off partner. What are they going to do? Zach is very much his own player, but Matthew is the team captain, and I have a hunch that by a small margin, he's probably captain of this team, too. I think the main reason to put yellow on the west boundary the way he's going to is that makes it easier for Matthew to rush black full tilt and get on the boundary and get a nice dolly rush to hoop one. He would also make the shot from the end of Bebop a little longer than if you put yellow out closer to hoop two, but they're not going to take that one anyway because that would make it ridiculously easy for red to get going. Should blue miss. I just figured out that Aston Wade is the 2023 under 21 golf croquet world champion, which everybody else knows, I'm sure. Makes sense with his gorgeous fluid swing and underscores how playing all the disciplines helps all the disciplines.
Joe Hogan, the storied New Zealand world champion, might have placed yellow on the east side of hoop one so that red could rush it into corner four and pick up blue going to hoop two with his famous Hogan roll. In this case, black is a poorly positioned pioneer at hoop two for that. And it's actually easier to do out of hoop two anyway because then you're rolling both balls to hoop three, which is considerably shorter. Let's see if Matthew tries that. You guessed it, Patty Chapman, beyond expert croquet. gap there but he has a rush on black back to the south boundary Mike Albert can't help himself. He's got to make life easier for everybody. Oh, I don't need to be that. I mean, just The modern version of the Hogan roll is significantly shorter than the original version, which has to go all the way to hoop two. He meant to put yellow a whole lot closer to the hoop. Almost missed it.
David Michael Luke. Yeah. 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 I don't know what he's doing here. Checking his line for irregularities, feeling for breaks that he can't see. He's not walking on his line, so there's nothing wrong with what he's doing. I got to ask him about that one. A rushable P. Lee is better than one that just barely trickles through. Is it rushable? The hallmark of Matthew's game as a teenager was a critical distance of 20 or 25 yards. He's now become a master tactician. And I honestly think that what he's about to do has helped set him apart as well. He's become very adept at precision croquet, meaning precise placement of the reception ball and hoops and then making hoops under control so that you get the rush you need out of any given hoop. It's critical in break building and absolutely essential to running sextuples. And it requires that the hoop shot be that short as much as possible. He's using Wiley's approach to bringing the triple back on time at the penult peel. It's a little out of favor these days, but it works beautifully in the right circumstance. He'll pick up blue after he makes six, send it to two back. While he's coming to yellow at penult for the peel attempt, and then black will be positioned just past six to be the pioneer for one bag. Yellow would be better about three feet farther so that it's in peeling range but doesn't obstruct Red's path to blue when it makes the hoop. That's the essence of this technique is that black is now the remote pioneer for one bag after the peel attempted penal. Yeah. 
short-term loan. Guys who are willing to do the long-term loan. At the same time, but now they're willing to do it. Well, I think we have to go this way and look at the town, and they won't do it unless they can find a spot. And he's, he was four grand under. I gave him two yesterday. It's 1600 monthly. I sent him 1700 in advance. He thought it was worth it. He thought he needed the money. And then that starts the whole process. Keeps the whole process. Yeah, yeah, you want to talk? Because we don't have any. He's obviously going to try this peel, and he'd be very happy to just jaws it, but he has to prioritize an unimpeded rush for red on black to one bag. That'll do. Your cameraman got distracted and he made one back and rushed black back to this position. Had things gone better at one back, he probably would have sent black to three back before he tried this. That may be why he's doing this gently instead of trying to knock yellow down to rover because he's going to perform another unusual maneuver and use the P. Lee as the three back pioneer. Check out Patty Chapman on this topic too in Beyond Expert Croquet. Oops, Blue's in the line of fire. He does not want to hit it. He's not going to do this, but if he wanted to try to make Rover after three back, he would put Black maybe five, six yards north of Rover, then go make three back off yellow, getting a rush back to Rover after three back. And then when he puts yellow in peeling position against the Rover peel with a stop shot, he's got a perfect escape ball in black going back toward four back hey yep patty chapman and beyond expert croquet they're actually black and still function as an escape ball if he wants to try that Let's see where he puts yellow.
probably won't have a rush to rover from there. So he'll play for the standard straight roll repeal. Oh my god, that same shot at the end of a sex tuple, he was trying to do a straight triple in the world championships against Robert Fulford, and pretty much the same thing happened. It cost him the world championship. The crowns on the quadways were causing problems in this situation. It's not just the alignment of the stanchions, it's whether his mallet can be clear of the of the crown. Jeff's out to fix it. And watch this carefully. Not only do we have world class croquet, we have world class refereeing here. Jeff Su, who was next in line to be on this team, has massive international experience, is the quintessential tournament director, and was just elected to a four-year term on the management committee of the World Croquet Federation. His precision in refereeing is to be emulated.
It's not really a spoiler that he's going to finish. Give us a like, subscribe, hit that notification bell. We have one more coming. And as always, thanks so much to our sponsors, Chris Barley, the United States Croquet Association, and Don Oakley's Croquet Store. Supplying beginners to world champions. So one of the hallmarks of elite play, a fifth turn triple peel. 26 to nothing. It seems cruel actually. But it sure makes the video shorter and easier to edit. So he's gonna tie it up one game apiece and the rubber match will come out in a couple of days.